These treaties in the past have been submitted while the work on the protocols still goes on. But we thought it was important that we really went through all the technical work in the protocols so that when we went to our Senate or when the Russian uh, government went to the Duma, it wasn't just, okay, so what's going to be in the protocols? It was, okay, we can look at the treaty, we can look at the protocols. So that was also some of the, the time uh, that uh, had to be taken in order to uh, really uh, get to the point where we both felt like we had the package necessary to go to our um, legislative bodies. And, and well, you know, we have consistently conveyed to our European friends and allies America's absolute commitment to um, our NATO partners and to their defense. Uh, the phase adaptive approach that uh, the president uh, concluded was the best way forward on missile defense, we think actually makes Europe safer from what are the real threats uh, that are out there. <clears throat> there is still work to be done in the uh, NATO Russia Council to uh, build. Uh, uh, confidence in our uh, Central and Eastern European partners uh, with Russia, but everybody's aware that that is something that is still ongoing. One of the reasons why it's so significant that the presidents will meet in Prague uh, is because we want to send exactly that signal that this is good for Europe as well as for the United States and Russia. Thank, thank you, Madam Secretary. I, I think the average American, when they hear talk of strategic arms reductions, their eyes glaze over. The two things they really worry about are loose nukes getting in the hands of terrorists, which you touched on, and nations like Iran getting nuclear weapons. Could you explain how this treaty paves the way for progress on those two issues? Well, Chip, you know, as the President said in his remarks, we have a vision, a long-term vision, of moving toward a world without nuclear weapons. We are absolutely realistic about how long that will take to convince everyone that this is in the world's interest. But the steps we are taking add up to something that makes a very clear statement of intent. So the START Treaty, um, it says to our country, the Cold War really is behind us, and these massive nuclear arsenals that both of our countries maintained as part of deterrence uh, no longer have to be so big. We can begin to cut that. That's not only in our security interests, but it also is a commitment by the United States and Russia toward nonproliferation and toward the eventual goal of a world without nuclear weapons. The nuclear security summit that the President will host in two weeks largest gathering of international leaders probably since the end of World War II in the United States, devoted to the idea of how do we keep nuclear materials out of the hands of rogue regimes and of terrorists. We come with more credibility. Russia comes with more credibility having negotiated this treaty. Then the nonproliferation treaty in May takes it one step further about how do we bring the nonproliferation regime into the 21st century when we know, unfortunately, that terrorist groups are seeking nuclear weapons and uh, states that uh, are not, uh, uh, they don't have the confidence of the international community in their ambitions, like Iran and North Korea, are also pursuing nuclear weapons. So you have to look at this as part of our whole uh, approach toward nonproliferation. Did Iran come up in the conversation a bit? Uh, let me just, it was a, a fairly brief conversation uh, finalizing the treaty. Uh, President Medvedev uh, mentioned uh, to President Obama that uh, he wanted to speak with him when they met next uh, in the Czech Republic. Savannah. You mentioned the bipartisan overwhelming majority of these treaties have passed with in the past. Is there anything that concerns you about this particular political environment that you won't be able to get those 67 votes? You can opine on health care while you're at it, since we haven't had an opportunity. And for Secretary Gates, is the Pentagon uncomfortable at all about the president's go-to-zero campaign, considering we do depend on nuclear weapons for our national security? Thanks. Well, well first, um, I think that uh, um, national security has always produced large bipartisan majorities, and I see no reason why this should be any different. Uh, we've had uh, a very uh, dynamic uh, political debate in our country over health care, which uh, was brought to a successful conclusion this week to the um, betterment of the American people going forward. Uh, but I, I don't believe that uh, uh, this ratification uh, effort 
will be affected by anything other than individual senators' assessments of whether this is in the best interest of American security. And I, I think that, as you heard from Bob and Mike, and you will hear uh, from many other experts in the administration over the weeks ahead as we testify and make the case uh, to the press and the public for this treaty, um, we are absolutely united in our belief that this is in America's interest. It's in America's interest in the particulars of this treaty, and it's in America's interest but because it, because it puts us in a very strong leadership position to make the case about an Iran, about a North Korea, about other countries doing more to safeguard nuclear materials. So I, I believe that um, a vast majority of the uh, Senate at the end of the day will see that this is in um, uh, America's interest, and it, it goes way beyond politics. Uh, let me first say a word about uh, ratification from my perspective. Uh, there has been a, a very uh, intense continuing consultation on the Hill uh, as the negotiations have proceeded. Two of the areas that have been of concern uh, in the Sen among senators are, are we protecting our ability to go forward with missile defense and are we going to make the investment in our nuclear infrastructure so that the stockpile will remain uh, reliable uh, uh, and safe? Uh, we have addressed both of those. Missile, con missile defense is not constrained by this, um, by this treaty. And we have in our budget, uh, in the President's budget that went to the Hill for FY11, almost $5 billion for investment in the nuclear infrastructure and, and maintaining the stockpile. So I think we have uh, addressed the concerns that uh, there may have been on the Hill. And so I, I echo the uh, sentiments of Secretary Clinton that I, I think the prospects are, are quite good. Uh, in terms of, um, of going to nuclear, uh, to zero nuclear weapons, the President has been very realistic um, in terms of uh, you know, when he originally discussed this, perhaps not in his lifetime. And we realize that uh, other countries have substantial numbers of uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, others are attempting to develop them. So uh, we will do this in a realistic way. But what this treaty does and some of the other steps, trying to get uh, control of fissile material, the nonproliferation treaty and so on, are concrete steps to move in that direction. But I don't think anybody expects uh, us to uh, come anywhere close to nu uh, zero nuclear weapons uh, anytime soon. Madam Secretary, um, to what degree in the preamble will missile defense be addressed? And did the Russians in any way, shape, or form insist upon some kind of linkage on future missile defense plans in the United States? And is there any concern that you have about Russia dissatisfaction with the Bulgaria-Romania component that they believe was not adequately conveyed to them before it was released in those two countries? Well, you know, Major, if I could, Robert, can I ask Undersecretary Tauscher to address this? Sure. Just fresh from Geneva. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, President Obama and President Medvedev met in July and discussed and had an agreement uh, that this is a strategic offensive weapons uh, treaty and that there is an interrelationship between strategic offensive and defensive, but that is the discussion, where this discussion ended. Uh, so I think when you see the treaty and the protocol, uh, there are no constraints on missile defense. When it comes to uh, Romania, uh, the phased adapted approach is in phases, as you can see, uh, 2011, 2015, and 2018 deployments. And uh, we have gone to extensive lengths to brief the Russians. Um, frankly, the phased adapted approach has been up on the web. The ballistic missile defense review has been up on the web for weeks and months. So we've gone through extensive briefings with the Russians. We don't pre-clear. Uh, any kind of conversations we have with allies and friends when we do things with them, with anyone, including the Russians. But we certainly talked to the Russians soon afterwards, and they knew about the Romanian invitation for the 2015 uh, SM3 deployment. Roger, do you have one? Well, yeah, I'd like to follow up with the Secretary of State on Iran. You've touched on a little bit, but <clears throat> and we've had Russia's cooperation now. What does that portend? Uh, going ahead with uh, Iran and the sanctions and getting them on board. We've had very constructive talks um, with all of our partners, and 
in-depth uh, consultations with the Russians, most recently last uh, Thursday and Friday when I was in Moscow. Uh, we are working on language. The Russians are involved in uh, uh, being consulted on that drafting process. Um, so we are um, pursuing the plan that we set forth from the very beginning of this administration, a two-track process uh, where the first track was engagement, which the President has uh, fulfilled in every way as he has reached out to the Iranians, and the other track of pressure in the event that uh, the Iranians would not engage or uh, refuse to uh, comply with their international obligations. Uh, 